Jake Epele. I'm the CEO and founder of the Abino Foundation. And um, I'm one person that is very passionate about disability inclusion. And so the movement for disability inclusion uh, in all sphere, not just in political sphere, we want disability inclusion in the spiritual sphere. The churches and the mosques are not inclusive. We want uh, financial inclusion, so it addresses issue around economic. We want political inclusion, which is the subject we have been discussing. We want social inclusion, you know. We want um, 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 a situation where, look, look at what is happening even in our relational field. Many of them are getting divorced. Many of them are getting abused, you know. Uh, the society must give us the space that we deserve, you know, and allow us to thrive. But my my consolation is this. If you don't give us the space, we will one day take the space. I was basically, I asked about a person with disabilities that have won elections, whether primary election or general election, mm -hmm. since 1999 to date. Unfortunately, uh, Chris, I don't have that figure in terms of numbers, but quite a lot of them we've interacted. As a matter of fact, today, I had a meeting with uh, um, our TRF project is started in Cross River. So I had a meeting with the team. One of them, uh, Joe, uh, is a person uh, who is uh, um, blind. And he won um, election as a councillor. And you know, in our interaction today, uh, I convinced him, I said, look, my friend, you've been a councillor. Go and, you know, contest to be the local government chairman. Uh, instead of you jumping that you want to come to um, House of Assembly, and meanwhile, you don't have what it takes. Because in, in our discussion, everybody was crying, look, we don't have money, the people have money. Don't, we don't have access to media, you understand? Yeah. Those are the things, as a politician, you build over time. They yeah. don't happen. It's not a rocket science. It's, it's, no, it, it's, it's doable, but you need time to build political pedigree uh, to get where you are. So I, I think um, our meeting, our forthcoming meeting, will address that issue because... We're trying to handpick all the people we know that either have contested the election, failed, succeeded, and bring them together in through our electability project. And we all have a robust discussion. Say, look, what is it that we want to? First is, are we really truly qualified? Do we have the competencies to go for? high elective position. Though those are not, it's okay. It's, it's, they, they, they are something that is achievable. But do you have the resources? Do you have what it takes, you know, to get that your community, you are well known in that community. Go back there and contest as local government chairman. Then you build both the financial muscles and the political muscles to even go to your house, uh, house of assembly. From there, you launch to national. You know, yes, you are known. Yes, you have some reasonable visibility, but translate that to what happens in the political arena. You just notice that you're not there. You know, so I think, uh, Chris, my my dear, my my call is for persons with disability to go to the grassroots. One, there's less competition. You know, there's less competition. Two, you don't need as much as you need for either state, sub-national and national. Uh, well, at this particular election mm -hmm. now, uh, that is coming up, uh, mm -hmm. are there many of them that actually uh, they, they, made they it are about, up about to 15 the primary? Yes. About 15 of them. Yeah, there are 15 of them. Okay. We have that list. You know, yeah, we have that list. Uh, one is a governorship candidate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pastor Umoino. Uh, uh, Basi. Yeah. 
understand. Mm, it's what a person disabilities? without ableism. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. A person with ableism. There okay. are other people with all about political appointment across FCT. Mm. You know, of persons with disabilities. I, I are they very visible? <coughs> Is this some of them that you you know that have been appointed at any level, maybe by area council chairman or by a, a senator or by any House of Rep member? You know, not that I know of. Uh, they may be, just like all of us were here, very many of us didn't know that one of us was contesting in the local government election, although he lost, you know. So there's a likelihood that they are, but I don't know, you know, um, which is also why we should invest in data, because data will pull out this information easily for us, you know. Elective position uh, or advocacy for it is also something we need to begin to take very seriously, you know, because for some of them that cannot vie for elective position, appointed position is the next, yeah. And I think the earlier we, we start asking for bigger position, like We've never crossed the threshold of essay. Yeah. We've never crossed the threshold of essay. We need to go beyond that. You know, why can't we get position like commissioners? Minister. Why can't we get position like minister? Just like I, I, um, I held the um, uh, court council. You know, I, I, I pointed. I looked at him and I said, "Tell me if you're going to appoint one of us." I said, "He said yes that he will." He wins, you know. So we need to get the commitment of other presidential candidates. You know, I understand that um, this Sunday uh, uh, on channel is either Peter B or or uh, Atiku. Whoever that comes up, we need to also ask them this same question: Will you? At the time has come. Will you appoint persons with disability? as one of your ministers. You never know who will win, but yeah. we need to hold them accountable so that when they win, you can go back to them, roll the tape, and say, this is what's your promise. We, we need to see it happen. And Chris, I think we, we don't need to wait until they start the process of appoint, appointment. And we start, no. The moment we know that this person has won, you know, we should go to the person. When that person is president-elect, to say that, look, you promise us this, so make sure it is fulfilled. And I think the level of awareness we have right now, many of them will take it very seriously. You know, uh, the political... Get, person with disabilities getting involved in political parties is one... Uh, is, is, I think it's one of the starting points. And uh, I want to know, are, they, are persons with disabilities actually in, uh, involved, in, are they included in political parties? Like maybe women with disabilities, are, all, are they also included in political parties? Then again, are they within the, the leadership positions of these political parties? We need to continue to influence the internal democracy of political parties. Um, we're not there yet. Some, some, one or two political parties have almost gotten it right, but there are many of them. If two or three or one um, could say to be inclusive in their de democratic internal democracy, that does not mean the other sixteen or seventeen or fifteen are. We still have a lot of work to do, and that is why I'm glad that you were part of the people that was there when we developed the guideline. I believe that that guideline needs to be used. They are not in proper circulation. Yeah. So we are just about to print. Not only are we going to disseminate, we are going to continue the advocacy for implementation. You know, it spells out what a political party can do to be inclusive from their internal democracy to writing their manifestos to 
they are having inclusive campaign committee you know, inclusive of persons with disability. Because all of this, even the appointive opportunities, starts when these internal democracy and, and processes mm -hmm. captures persons with disability. You know, if, for instance, you have a presidential campaign committee or council, which is the order of mm -hmm. the day, and there are persons with disability in that council, and the persons with disability works well, with the council. During appointment, they have the moral authority to ask for a position in the appointment, you know. So I, I think the more we advocate for proper internal inclusion in the, demo, in the internal democracy of the political party, the better for us. It also gives us the opportunity for even one of them going through primaries, you know, yeah. I think th this is very important. But again, it boils down to the same thing. Let us focus on grassroots democracy. It's less competi competitive, you know, there are more opportunities there. Once we get it right, you know, I'll give you an instance. Most governors today that are strong, go and check their pedigree. They started from local government. A, a typical example is Wike. Wike was Obiabo local government chairman, you know, grew in influence that the governor made him chief of staff. Chief of staff is a very powerful position, you know. From chief of staff, he became the uh, minister of state. From minister of state, he went back and became governor. The process of leadership does not happen overnight. It's a tedious, grassroots-driven process. Even God does not just make one a leader overnight. You have to go to that bottom, top approach so that as you're growing in leadership, you're growing in influence, but you're also growing in experience, knowing how the downtrodden feels knowing what it takes to come from a nobody position to a somebody position. So that when you get there, you will not abuse people that are below you because you came from their path. Yeah. All right.